So to be able to navigate between the tabs, we need an event for these. So let's go to properties and events and it's the selected index changed. So I'm going to call this tab shopping cart underscore selected index changed and press enter. And this event belongs to all three of these tabs. When I go to the second one, go to properties and events, you can see that it is there because these are basically grouped together and we will simply navigate between these three. And the selected index change simply means that this is an index one, index two and index three. And we need to know where we are and what we are adding together in our shopping cart. So first, like I said, we need to know what tab we are on. So let's do a switch statement and we are checking where in our tab that order form what selected index we are on. It's case one. So here we can put together our order. So first we'll check if there is any order at all. So if items ordered equals zero, then there is no order and we can display a message box saying that no items were ordered. So we'll do a message box that show no items were ordered and the capture invalid order and let's do the message box button OK and message box icon is an error and we'll make sure that we are going back to the first tab so the user can actually enter an order so we can reset it to tab order form dot selected index equals zero. So this will send us back to the first tab. If an order was placed, let's do an else statement. Then we can process it. So first we need to calculate the cost. So we'll create a double, I'll call it total cost, because right now we're only capturing the cost of each individual items. So now we need to add it all together. And I can set it to zero by default. Since we are calculating the cost, we can clear the products first. So it's gonna be items that are clear. So we can display everything fresh. And now we can loop through the products that were ordered and calculate the cost. So let's do a for loop. We'll start from index zero, of course. I is less than number of products and I plus plus. And here we will check if the number ordered is not zero. Because remember, every product that is ordered has the number ordered increased. If it is a zero, that means that product was not ordered and we are looping through each of them to find out which one was ordered and which one still has number ordered zero. And those are the ones that are not ordered. So let's do an if statement and go to products array. We are looping through each of them. So index I and check the number ordered. And like I said, if it is not equal zero, then the product was ordered. And if it was ordered, we can add it to the list. So we can go LST products dot items and we can add it there. So we are adding each of those products that were ordered. So they come from the products again with the index of I and we have the number of ordered dot to string. So we will display how many of these particular product were actually ordered and we can concatenate it together so it will say the number and then the description so basically it will say two mouse or one keyboard or three computers and such so we will go to products with the index of i and the property we want is description and here we can put together the total cost so this is the total cost for all the products ordered. So what we need to do is to add it together to all the previous total costs. So plus equals, and we add this product cost to it. So it's going to be products with the index of I. And we are now calculating the cost. So it's the cost multiplied by how many of these particular products were ordered. So it's gonna be products with the index of i dot number ordered. 
So if two computers are ordered, the cost is 1000 per each, so it will be multiplied by 2. So at the end of the loop, our list box will have the description and number of ordered products for each individual product, as well as the total cost calculated. So at the end, we can display the total cost in our label. So after the loop, we'll have the total cost and we'll go to our products label dot text and we can specify that the total cost and it's a dollar sign and here we will concatenate the total cost and we can format it together so it's gonna be string dot format so it's a currency so in curly braces we'll format it to two floating points or two decimal points and we are formatting the total cost. So this is a case one. So at the end of the case, we of course have to break. So we can now go to a case two. So the next one is the mailing label. So that's gonna be a case two. And we want to go to a third tab. We need to make sure that the address was not left blank in our first tab. If you go to our design, over here, we need to fill in the address. And in our second tab, we don't really care about the address. We don't capture it there. We only capture the product. That's why we had the condition that we needed to have an order. But when we move to the mailing label from our shopping cart, then we have to have this address captured as well. So in our case two, first, we are going to make sure that there is an address. So txt order address, dot text if this one equals blank then we'll display a message box so i'm gonna copy these two lines paste them here but this one will say that no address was entered and it says invalid address and we can leave the message box button okay and error for the icon and we want to go back to the first tab so the user can enter the address and we can also specify that we want to focus on our order address so the user can enter it directly there. So again, if the address is blank, we'll display a message, we return back to the first tab and we'll have the user enter the address. If everything is okay, we'll do an else, then our order is complete. So I'm going to create a variable string called address and this one will come from the txt order address. And we know it's there because we already checked over here if it is there. So this is in our else statement. And here we can go to our txt mailing label dot text and it will equal the address. Basically we are passing the address to it. So this is our case two. After the end of it, we have to break. And this is all the code we need. We are simply moving between the tabs and making sure that the order as well as the address were entered correctly. So let's test this.